In the United States, the third day of the Democratic National Convention has closed with the nomination of Minnesota Governor Tim Walz for Democratic Vice President. Governor Walz accepted the nomination with a speech that blended optimism with criticism of Donald Trump. Thousands of delegates attended the event in Chicago. As Walz formally accepted his nomination, his family was watching from the floor, including his 17-year-old son, who leapt to his feet in tears and clapped in an emotional moment that's going viral on social media. Here's some of what uh, Tim Walz had to say. When Republicans use the word freedom, they mean that the government should be free to invade your doctor's office. Corporations, free to pollute your air and water. And banks, free to take advantage of customers. But when we Democrats talk about freedom, we mean the freedom to make a better life for yourself and the people that you love. Let's get more from uh, our reporter, Pablo Foley-Elias. Uh, welcome, Pablo. Biggest speech, then, of Tim Walls' uh, uh, life. What else did he tell the Democratic faithful? Well, it was a really high-energy speech, full of joy, but also he went on the offense as well. It was a good opportunity for him to basically tell the world, tell American voters who he is and what his background is. He talked about how he's from a rural background in the Midwest, how he's basically this sort of average guy who's very relatable to people. He also talked talk about his struggles in having children as well with his wife. Um, and also he stressed, as we've seen there in that soundbite, this element of freedom. He really went on the offense there, focusing on essentially um, some of the big topics that Donald Trump has been looking at, abortion rights. Um, he's been focusing as well on the economy as well, basically focusing on, um, this is Waltz, focusing on the small guy in, in society and protecting them. So these were sort of the big areas uh, that he really wanted to look at. And he also used some quite a strong language to describe Donald Trump, describing him as dangerous. Okay. Uh, and so who was he pitching to beyond the, the gathered party faithful? Middle Americans. So let's not forget that Walls is from, um, he's the governor of Minnesota, a Midwestern state. And the Democrats have had an issue, particularly in recent years, in that they've been losing a lot of particularly white men. They've been going to the Republican Party. So this is an opportunity to show that the Democrats can appeal to those voters, perhaps these uh, so-called football dads. He stressed as well the fact that he's a school teacher and that he's a coach, which is also part of this sort of relatable image that he's trying to get across. He talked about some of the policies as well that he passed while he was as governor with regard to gun safety, introducing free school lunches and paid family leave, but also focusing on the economy, stressing some of these what have been described as um, populist policies, um, such as uh, grants for home buyers, uh, cutting healthcare costs, and also cutting food costs. And also, like we heard in that soundbite before, he really did attack uh, this idea of sort of uh, the little guy being attacked by um, big corporations. So you've mentioned the economy and abortion rights. Uh, tell us more about what we learned about how the Democrats intend to govern? Well, some of the people who spoke um, on day three, we had abortion rights activists, we had LGBTQ activists as well, and we had liberal groups who were representing women and Latino voters, for example. But one area where the Democrats have been attacked, particularly by the, Dem by the Republicans, is immigration, and that was tackled on the night. Um, and it sort of highlighted the fact that the Democrats are going to shift a little bit more to the right um, and sort of go more in the direction of the Republicans in that sense. Um, so that was an area that they really needed to highlight and they're going to continue to have to highlight in the coming weeks and months. And there was star power on show? That's right, there's no shortage of star power in the Democrats, um, whereas with the Republicans you see people like former wrestler Hulk Hogan, the Democrats bring in Big, big names uh, and one big surprise guest, apart from, before I get on to the surprise guest, I should mention there was Bill Clinton was there, uh, the former president. He tends to focus a lot on economics. That's He's an old hand at these uh, conventions. But this surprise uh, appearance came from the, uh, what would you call her? talk show, former talk show queen, and also very influential figure in the United States, Oprah Winfrey. So let's take a listen to what she had to say. Let us choose freedom. Why? Because that's the best of America. We're all Americans, and together, let's all choose Kamala Harris. 
So there you have it. I mean, Oprah Winfrey, very influential figure. She was appealing to the independent voters and gave her backing very clearly, obviously, to Kamala Harris and to, to Waltz. So, you know, the influence of people like um, uh, Oprah Winfrey is very important as the race is so tight at the moment. But we also saw other names appear. We had Stevie Wonder too, and uh, the music legend, John Legend who also sung on the night. And we'll be continuing to see big names um, later on when Kamala Harris um, also will be making her appearance. Okay, thanks for that, Pablo. Pablo Foley-Elias.